eight years. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. As we turn now to Pakistan, where outrage continues to mount over the U.S. military's first act of war approved by President Obama. Last Friday, unmanned U.S. predator drones fired missiles at houses in Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas, or FATA, killing as many as 22 people, including at least three children. The United States has carried out 30 such drone attacks on alleged al Qaeda targets inside Pakistani territory since last summer, killing some 250 people, according to a tally by Reuters. The Pakistani Prime Minister, Yusuf Raza Gilani, told an audience at the World Economic Forum in Davos on Thursday that U.S. drone attacks are, quote, counterproductive and ended up uniting local communities with militants. But Defense Secretary Robert Gates indicated Tuesday to Senate Armed Services Committee hearing that such strikes will continue and that Pakistani officials are aware of U.S. policy on this matter. Both President Bush and President Obama have made clear that we will go after al Qaeda wherever al Qaeda is, um, and, and we will continue to pursue that. Has that decision been transmitted to the Pakistan government? Yes, sir. Pakistani officials, however, deny there's any agreement with the United States to secretly allow drone attacks inside Pakistan. Defense Secretary Gates' comments on the missile attacks were the first to publicly acknowledge the strikes since last Friday. This is an excerpt of last Friday's White House press briefing with, well, the new press secretary, Robert Gibbs. And other U.S. officials have confirmed uh, these, these predator drone airstrikes. Pakistan, what, what is it about? Uh, cannot confirming whether the president was I'm consulted. Gonna, I'm not going to get into these I'm matters. Compromise operational. I'm, uh, I'm not going to get into these matters. Don't you think well, that's a justifiable I, curiosity, Robert, about the president's first military action? There are many things that you should be justifiably curious about, but I'm not going to get well, into talking about the US, this. If other members of the U.S. government are confirming this, why is it that you can't comment? I'm not going to get into these matters. Vice President Joseph Biden also refused to comment Sunday as to whether the United States would notify Pakistan before sending forces into their territory. He was on CBS's Face the Nation with Bob Schieffer. Last week, an American drone apparently attacked an al-Qaeda force, or what they thought was an al-Qaeda force, uh, in the territorial uh, part of, uh, of Pakistan, a cross-border operation. Uh, it's my understanding that the president, the previous president, gave our U.S. forces and the CIA permission to go across that border uh, to go after al-Qaeda if it became necessary on the ground. Uh, does President Obama, will he continue that policy? Well, Bob, as you know, I can't speak to any particular attack. Uh, I can't speak to any particular action. Um, it's not appropriate for me to do that. But I can say that the President of the United States said during his campaign and in the debates that if there is an actionable target of a high-level al-Qaeda personnel, that, uh, that he would not hesitate to, uh, uh, to use action to deal with that. But here's the good news. The good news is that in my last trip, and I've been to Pakistan many times and that region many times, there's a great deal more cooperation going on now between the Pakistan military in an area called the FATA, mm -hmm. the federally administered territory, Waziristan, North Waziristan, all that area we hear about that is really sort of ungovernable, not sort of, it's been ungovernable for the Pakistani government. That's that's where the bad guys are hiding. That's where the Al Qaeda folks are, and some other malcontents. And so, what we're doing is we're in the process of working with the Pakistanis to help train up their counterinsurgency capability, their military, and we're getting new agreements with them about how to deal with cross border movements of these folks. So, we're making progress. Would you notify them? before any of these cross-border movements, because, as you well know, there, there's a fear that, the, that there would be leaks on something like that, and there might be a temptation not to. Exactly what is our policy on that? I always try to be completely candid with you, but I can't respond to that question. I'm you, not going to respond to that question. You're not going to respond. Vice President Biden being interviewed by Bob Schieffer on Face the Nation. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. When we come back from break, we'll speak with a Pakistani activist and scholar about the first military attack in the Obama administration, the unmanned drone attack in Pakistan. Stay with us.
Nusrat Fatah Ali Khan here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As U.S. Special Envoy to Afghanistan and Pakistan, Richard Holbrook prepares to head to the region next week. I'm joined now here in the Firehouse studio by Pakistani political scientist Sahar Shafrat. Welcome to Democracy Thanks Now! Very it's very good to have you with us. Uh, what about this unmanned drone attack? Where did it happen? What about the denials uh, on both sides of U.S. Pakistani? Uh, cooperation. The attacks happen in Fata, which is the federally administered tribal areas. It's this um, no man's land, literally, between uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, colonial era um, sort of uh, administrative region. Um, the denials, I think, are part of this drama that uh, is sort of a mutually agreed upon play that uh, that both the U.S. and Pakistan are engaged in, which is the U.S. is going to engage, uh, carry out these drone attacks. The Pakistani government will deny that they had any knowledge and will uh, express outrage for domestic consumption. But they're very deeply unpopular. And I should add that they have caused a humanitarian crisis within Pakistan. Um, in Bajor, for example, uh, it's estimated that about 300,000 people have fled the region, which is about half the population there. And it's. Explain where that region is. That is in part of Fata, which is the federally administered tribal area. So Bajor is one of the agencies within that. Right next to Afghanistan. Right next to Afghanistan, yes. It's a, it's a, it's a series of about um, 10 or 11 uh, different agencies within this, um, this what uh, Vice President Biden called the no-man's land, this ungovernable land. Um, it's supposed to have uh, autonomy. Um, and this has been, as I said, a colonial-era legacy, uh, which, the, which successive Pakistani governments have more or less respected. Um, this, of course, changed dramatically after 9-11, when the Pakistani government was forced to intervene um, because Taliban and al-Qaeda had fled there from Afghanistan, so, um, which was a, a, a radical change in policy. So right now, um, this latest attack, what do you know about it? Um, we have learned so far that something like uh, 22 people were killed, three of them children. Um, I don't know much more than that, much more than what you know. Um, but I will also add that it's disappointing from my perspective, and I think from Pakistanis' perspective, that the new administration, which clearly has recognized that the, there were terrible mistakes made in the Bush era that have to be now um, sort of corrected um, with policy changes, has refused to acknowledge that there were serious mistakes that have been made in U.S. policy towards Pakistan, and has, in fact, made clearly a decision to continue uh, U.S. policy towards Pakistan. What is your assessment of Richard Holbrook, who's headed to the region now? Richard Holbrook, I, th I mean, there are many sort of re um, uh, reasons to object to his involvement, which, uh, you know, sort of pertain to his past. But I do want to point out one additional thing, which is that he's been named the special envoy to Afghanistan and Pakistan. Originally, he was supposed to be named envoy to Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. The Indian government lobbied very fiercely to have that designation removed because they did not want to be lumped in with Afghanistan and Pakistan. And that, from my view, is unfortunate because, you know, throughout, uh, for example, uh, Obama's campaign, he noted that the solution to this, the problems in Afghanistan and Pakistan must involve some kind of solution between India and Pakistan as well, that India is part of this equation. And I agree with that. And so it's disappointing that the sort of official designation for Richard Holbrook is not going to include um, India at all in this equation. The level of support for uh, President Obama before he became president and now? In Pakistan? Um, he was uh, definitely more popular before the attacks on Friday, uh, a week ago. Um, and in fact, the prime minister of Pakistan had more or less guaranteed to the Pakistani public that when President Obama comes into office, these drone attacks are going to stop. So um, he is, of course, been extremely embarrassed by this uh, by this action, and uh, there have already been mass protests against U.S. bombing. And I think a lot of disillusionment has set in because there were hopes that there would be some kind of policy correction, policy change, and um, that appears to not be the case. At all.